So uh, we're talking about type 2 diabetes here. At a metabolic level, I think the problem is that somebody with type 2 diabetes struggles to metabolize sugar. And that means really that for them, uh, sugar is almost a metabolic poison. The more sugar they have, the more poisoned they are. It's true to say that for some people, it may be due to stress or it may be due to medication that they're on, like steroids, for instance. But I have found that for most people, type 2 diabetes is closely related to the amount of sugar they're having in their diet. I think many people know that already, but what they don't know is that starchy carbohydrates break down into surprising amounts of sugar. So that people tell me, well, I've already given up sugar, so why am I diabetic? Why are my blood sugars so very high? And then I explain to them, well, if you're going to have, let's say, a, a small slice of brown bread, in terms of your blood sugar, that is exactly the same as three teaspoons of sugar. So you could either have a slice of brown bread or three teaspoons of sugar. It, it's the same for you. A bowl of rice, 150 grams of boiled rice, affects your blood glucose to the same extent as a surprising 10 teaspoons of sugar. So these various things help us predict how starchy foods break down into glucose and it then becomes obvious that for very many people avoiding sugary foods and starchy foods helps their blood glucose and over time uh, that helps their uh, diabetic care. Of course nothing's immune to the compliance issue but what I find is that patients are so delighted to find themselves in control over their own disease. Imagine if you'd been told you had a chronic, progressive, deteriorating condition. How depressing is that? But then if somebody helped you get control, that's so empowering and important. On top of that, if you felt in charge of your chronic, deteriorating, progressive condition, how about if you lost nine kilos in weight? How about if your tummy was smaller? And how about if you could breathe better? You might also have some issues with better mental clarity. So these things mean that although I do find some patients um, struggle at times, they tend to go back to low carb because it works for them. And I think this underpins a surprising spread of the low carb approach, uh, which is international now. Okay, well I've already mentioned weight loss, so uh, in my clinic I find the patient on average is losing about 9 kilos in weight. That's quite a lot of weight. And of course if you've got painful knees or low back pain, painful ankles, that weight loss can really count. For some of the patients it really helps their breathing as well. Again climbing stairs, if you're heavy that's a struggle. Or running after your grandchildren in the park. But these people are delighted because they find they can breathe better. We're finding other things as well though. Uh, there are significant improvements in uh, blood pressure. This means that quite a few of the patients are coming off what they thought was lifelong medication for blood pressure. They find this very cheerful and very empowering because they think, well, I'm in charge of my health now. I can do things to, to help. Other things are to improve. The lipid profiles, I think many people worry about lipid profiles. That's cholesterol, triglycerides and so on. But what's so interesting is we find the cholesterol, the total cholesterol, improves significantly. The HDL, the helpful cholesterol, in increases, so that's going up. At the same time as triglycerides come down by quite a lot. And that overall is a very encouraging, a very encouraging um, picture.